Ah, uh, the pineal gland. A subject I wanted to talk about for a long ass time now. So, let's dive into it. Hello beautiful beings, my name is Nick and welcome back to my channel. Now, what exactly is the pineal gland? The pineal gland, or commonly referred to as the third eye, is a very, very tiny gland located in the middle of our brain between our two hemispheres, uh, basically the size of a grain of rice, but is uh, in the shape of a pine cone. The word is derived from the Latin word pinea, which basically means pine cone. From a biological point of view, it represents some sort of atrophied photoreceptor. Because in some amphibians and some reptiles, it can be linked to a light sensing organ uh, known as the parietal eye or the third eye. Some scientists have found that the photoreceptor cells inside the retina uh, in humans strongly, strongly resembles those of the pineal gland and the pineal gland of other mammals, such as a fish, frog, and birds. Now the question is, why do we have cells that resemble uh, photoreceptors uh, basically located in the gland in the middle of our brain where it doesn't have access to light. We have a gene in our DNA called the SAG gene or the S antigen and is a major soluble photoreceptor protein that is expressed in the retina of humans and in the pineal gland. Now it raises the question again, why do we have a photoreceptor protein uh, that can be expressed in the pineal gland? My own personal theory is that it is there to access light, but not any type of light, to access our inner light, our soul basically. Or light that we can't normally see with our two eyes, acting like uh, some sort of uh, sixth sense, perhaps accessing other worlds of perception not accessible to us naturally, and or uh, maybe other dimensions or even our dream state or dreams in general. Funny thing, the famous French philosopher René Descartes uh, in the 1600s uh, used to call the pineal gland the seat of the soul. And I quote what he said was the pineal gland is the principal seat of the soul, a place in which all our thoughts are formed. The pineal gland is a very small endocrine gland uh, part of our endocrine system that basically secretes hormones directly in our blood. Calcification of the pineal gland is very common amongst uh, normal adults and has been found in children as young as two years of age. When the pineal gland is calcified and or severely damaged, it can actually affect children's development. When the pineal gland is calcified and or severely damaged in children, development of sexual organs and skeleton is greatly accelerated and can basically lead to a premature puberty, as found in studies. The pineal gland naturally produces melatonin, a serotonin-derived hormone which basically regulates our sleep and wake cycles. When the pineal gland is calcified, it can be detrimental uh, in its ability to synthesize melatonin. Usually, two things contribute to the calcification of the pineal gland. Excess calcium intake and fluoride. 
for some reason, it is uh, magnetically attracted to the pineal gland, contributing to uh, its calcification. There has been a study approximately 35 years ago that I've shown that approximately 40% of uh, children of 17 years old and younger have a calcified pineal gland in the United States, which is why it's important to decalcify it. The pineal gland, or the third eye, has been referred to in many different countries uh, or religions all around the world, or as very coincidental similarities uh, with other countries and uh, religions all around the world. In the Egyptian culture, the eye of Horus, which is a symbol of protection, royal power, and good health. The symbol was supposed to protect the pharaoh in the afterlife. Basically, it has very funny similarity uh, with the middle of our brain, precisely close to where our pineal gland is located. In the Indian and East Asian iconography, especially in Hinduism and Buddhism, the third eye is the Ajna Chakra the sixth chakra or the brow chakra. The third eye or eye of wisdom or in Buddhism the urna is denoted as a dot or a mark in the middle of the forehead. Uh, especially you can see that in the deities of uh, Shiva and Buddha especially. It represents the visual intuitive and psychic center of perception. It is where our memory comes from, where our imagination develops, and where we perceive dreams. It's funny that it's shaped like a pine cone, because when you look at other cultures all around the world, uh, you can actually find some depiction of pine cones. Pine cones are usually seen as a symbol of enlightenment, fertility, third eye, and eternal life. In the Egyptian stories, Osiris, the god of the gods, basically has a staff. And on his staff has intertwining serpents and a pine cone in the middle, basically at the top of the staff. The pine cone staff of Osiris uh, 1224 BC uh, is depicted uh, in the Egyptian Museum in Turin, Italy. Then we have the magnificent ruins of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, which represents and have a lot of symbolism of pine cones. Then we have the old Sumerian god called Marduk, and uh, basically he's holding a pine cone with his hand, just like that, like he's kind of holding knowledge or something. <laughs> in the Assyrian period, between 865 to 860 BCE, in the Northwest Palace of Nimrud uh, in Iraq, the right hand of a eagle head protective spirit is uh, holding a pine cone and appears to be sprinkling uh, some sort of fluid basically in the back of the king's head uh, as many depictions are showing. Then we had a huge Roman bronze pine cone statue that used to be a fountain and basically is now located in the Vatican City. It's called Fontana della Pigna from the uh, first century AD and which is directly translated into the pine cone. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the possibility that the pineal gland creates DMT, dimethyltryptamine, or also called uh, the spirit molecule, and which is the most powerful psychedelic known to man uh, that is natural and basically found in plants all around the world. DMT has been found in the pineal gland of rats before, uh, in human lungs and uh, other places in the body.
It's supposed to induce altered states of consciousness comparable to meeting God and or visiting other dimensions. Very, very popularized uh, by Joe Rogan, <laughs> but uh, basically uh, there's also some people that says that we can actually trigger it naturally in our pineal gland while doing something that's called breath work. There is also a lot of speculation that it is the thing that is produced in the pineal gland when you stay in complete darkness for a long period of time, uh, basically which is called also a prisoner's cinema. Dr. Rick Strassman, MD, uh, made some research actually on it, on many different uh, subjects, and it was very, very interesting. You might want to look into it if you're interested. He wrote a book about it uh, called DMT, the Spirit Molecule. And a lot of uh, the different subjects uh, on this study uh, were claiming to have met God, or to have met other entities, and or uh, have traveled to other dimensions, and or have completely went outside of their body and had very uh, either prophetic visions or had a very very spiritual experience. The same kind of experience that yogis and uh, people that meditate very for many many years uh, basically have opened the third eye and apparently is very comparable. It is speculated by this doctor that DMT is produced in the pineal gland in times of heavy stress, uh, like a near-death experience, or a time of birth, or uh, a time of death, or is uh, produced in very, very uh, small amounts in the pineal gland uh, during heavy REM sleep, while you're actually dreaming. I personally think that when you're about to die, it, the gland can actually help produce it and can help your soul basically to transcend this plane of existence. But that is pure speculation though. A friend of mine actually had a car accident many, many years ago and uh, basically told me that uh, it was the exact same experience except the only difference was that uh, his life uh, wasn't rolling in front of his eyes when he was actually... Uh, on that molecule versus when he actually had the accident. So it's just, you know, uh, some very interesting topics uh, that I thought that I might just throw in there that you might be interested in looking into. So basically, this concludes my video for today. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, please smash that like button for me. That would be very helpful. It really helps my channel grow and it helps with the YouTube algorithms. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more content. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a great day. Peace and namaste.